Hello, Dangle here. A and M services. Okay. All right. Advancing no movement services. I'm gonna have a smoke. I'm gonna have a cigarette. At Assembly Hall, which you might call synagogue or church or mosque in other religions, but we call it Assembly Hall. You don't really smoke at Assembly Hall. You don't smoke inside the Assembly Hall. You go outside to smoke. So, you know, you go outside to smoke. Pastor in pastor's office, you know, it's, uh, that's his private domain in some ways, but, um, in the general run, running f to and fro of the assembly hall where people are congregating and stuff, you don't smoke in there. You don't smoke in the hallways. You don't smoke in the auxiliary room. You don't smoke in the toilets. You don't smoke in the library, the study rooms. You don't smoke in the congregation hall. You go outside to smoke. Past this office, he's in there working at times, whatever. That's his, that's his private call. He, he, he calls shots on that, or she calls the shots on that. But generally, you don't smoke in the assembly hall. <laughs> now, um, A&M services. Now, I grew up Catholic, then I went agnostic for a few years, Catholic for 16 years, all the way to Altar Boy, and um, christening or baptism, confession, confirmation, uh, communion and confirmation. I got my confirmation as well. And... Um, we went just about every Sunday of my life. I just about went. Hardly ever missed. Don't think I did miss. Um, sort of once, practically, until about sixteen. Then, then I was a couple. Of, then I stopped going. But why I'm saying that is that I got a fairly good idea of how Catholic services run. Years of going to Catholic mass. Then I spent about three and a half years in Pentecostal churches, part of South United Pentecostal Church. And I'd go about three times a week and with revival meetings, it was extra meetings. So in that three and a half years, I practically built up as many services as I had in Pentecost as I had in the Catholic Church. There was a lot of services. So I've got a fairly good idea of how Pentecostal churches run. And I visited Baptist churches, evangelical churches during that time, and other churches during that time. And I've got a fairly good idea how Christians run their services. Okay. Now, I think for the a and we run it probably in a variety of styles. We would run a ritualistic service, like a Catholic Mass. And we would probably run a charismatic service as well, like Pentecostals. I was just watching SBN just then, Sun Life Broadcasting Network on TV in Australia here, with Jimmy Swaggart. I think that's him, Jimmy Swaggart. And um, he's Pentecostal sort of stuff. And um, I recall as, as he's doing the service how, I recall my time in Pentecostal church how Especially later on in the service, after the preaching with the altar call and things, and the music going and stuff, uh, there was sort of an, an atmosphere there. People were down in the front of the altar, confessing their sins to God, and meeting with the Lord, meeting with Jesus, and meeting with God, perhaps. And um, it was a spiritual sort of time. And one thing I know, which goes on at those times, is that People do really confess and repent of a lot of sin. They take that to a degree seriously and get over a lot of stuff. They get over some things. They deal with some issues. And 
it's a religious experience with God. And I think there's a place in that for, for an eternal life. There's a place in those sorts of experiences. If someone wants to live forever or heaven on earth, or heaven or earth, if someone's living forever on earth, I think in your life there probably is a place for the ritualistic style and also for the charismatic style where you're dealing with your issues because they do come up from time to time. And having that connection, even with the strict preaching, even if you're very experienced at biblical teaching and things, and this is Torah we're talking about, I think charismatic Torah there's probably a place for it. There's probably a place to encounter Yahweh, Jehovah God, El Shaddai, and come to terms with some of our cruder behaviours and confess them. And the spiritually alive singing and charismatic sort of experience, I'm not so sure if that's out of place in a, a Noahide assembly hall. I think for the encounter with the heart, which it does, it might be appropriate. So that's some thoughts I have on A&M services, advancing no movement services. Thank you.